morning my darlings welcome to a new vlog it's gonna be a glorious day today I had the best start to the day already i've actually been awake since four o'clock in the morning um very boring reason why we turned the heating on in the house yesterday and the water was coming into our bathroom towel rail pipes very loudly at 4am and then I couldn't get back to sleep so did a peloton, enjoyed the beautiful sunrise um, and now ready for the day. Heading into London today, I've got a hydrofacial at Harrods which I'm so excited for. I haven't had a hydrofacial since before the wedding and they are the best for just deep cleaning the skin and I've got a couple of meetings before that and I would like to do a spot of shopping. For some reason, I had a really productive spur, spur, spurt moment <laughs> last night and had such a blitz in this room. Norm well, you can't really tell, um, but I cleared out loads and loads of things. I actually did the swap over. I took all of my dresses out of the big wardrobe at the back and put them away for storage, my summer dresses, except for a few, just in case we have any last minute sunny days. And I hung up all of my autumn winter coats, which had been previously in storage for the summer. I feel like that was the shortest season of having um, my coats stored ever. I think I only put them away in like May and we're already getting them back out again. No, I probably didn't, I didn't even put them away until mid June. I think it was only just before the wedding, which is wild. So yes, heading into London today, um, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling quite spendy <laughs> at the moment. During my 4 a.m. lying in bed, listening to the towel rail turn on, I did a big net of water order. Um, loads of skims, I bought loads of skims, and I bought some really nice footwear. The order is due to arrive on the day this video goes live, so if I can do some magical turnaround, then perhaps I will show you what I got. But um, I placed another Netta Porter order last week, and I'm gonna show you some of the gorgeous bits that I got in there, including this dress which I'm wearing right now, which I can already tell is gonna be, ooh, hair in my mouth. I can already tell this is gonna be one of those things that I get so much wear out of and just love and almost gets boring how much I want to wear it over the autumn. So I will show you those bits. Um, what else do I have to... <laughs> I have got really randomly back into the habit of using this. This is the Palmer's Cocoa Butter Formula Natural Bronze Body Lotion. I used to use this all the time when I was younger um, and it's a gradual tan and it's just so moisturizing and I feel like you can get such expensive tanning products and sometimes doing an actual tan is quite faff. You have to like plan your... Um, beauty routine around it but I'm just using this at the moment as my daily moisturizer and it's just keeping me glowing and not like a mega tan but perfect for this time of year. What else did I use in my beauty routine this morning? My gorgeous L'Occitane Divine Cream, my favorite daily moisturizer at the moment. It's just so nourishing and glow inducing and anti-aging and all of that goodness. So that is on my skin and of course my Eve Long, as always, SPF 20, no, 50, oh my goodness, SPF 50. I might switch down to 30 when this tube runs out, but I might not, who knows. And the last little thing I've got that I haven't put away yet is my lipstick. Today I popped on Laura Mercier in the shade, gosh, it's so shiny, Crystal Rose, and it's just a really nice, balmy, it's not too brown, but it's not like, a really summery pink if that makes sense beautiful so that's going to come in my handbag with me today speaking of handbags i'm on the lookout for something fun and something practical maybe two new bags for autumn winter you might see <laughs> later on in this video an unboxing of the practical one because i ordered that this morning but for my fun one i have ordered something which is my first I believe my first purchase from this brand and it is this adorable little Jacquemus bag. It's such a teeny tiny size. I will literally only be able to carry my essentials in it. I haven't actually checked yet if my phone fits in it. It does, thank goodness. But how sweet is this? I'm 
Where I am a rattan and a straw lover in summer, I am a huge shearling lover in autumn, winter, and this I just thought was so cute. So let us spin around a little and I'll show you the dress styled with the bag. So, okay, first of all, please ignore this pile in the background. Did also order a couple of Heather shoes, which I will open with you in a second. Yes, bag and dress combo are giving major autumn vibes super cozy and yet lovely and chic now this dress i would not have um i wouldn't have naturally searched this but netta porter actually served this to me as an instagram ad they have got the algorithm so spot on um because i am a frequent purchaser of things that i see on my instagram ads from netta porter so bravo netta porter targeting team because this really is to me perfection let's talk about the dress a little bit more so it is a knitted dress but it's not like hugging the body anywhere that i don't particularly want to be hugged it's a little bit different to your typical knit dress in that it's just got a little something special about the silhouette it's kind of a wrap style like you're never going to be revealing leg when you don't want to because it's a very like high amount of crossover wrap if that makes sense but when you're walking you're going to have a little bit of movement you might catch a little bit like a tiny little bit of leg but not not an amount you know like the Abercrombie dresses that I love um that I showed you two vlogs ago they they showed a lot of leg whereas this you are wrapped up until you walk and then you show just the tiniest bit which I love because of that wrap detail, you've got this almost like cinched in um, effect around the waist. It's almost like the fabric just folds and hangs in a really nice natural way. So if you are a little bit conscious about this area, which I am, then it's very flattering in that area. The fabric is so stretchy. It's like teddy fabric. Can you see it's got a bit of stretch to it? Really nice length sleeves. I love a three quarter length sleeve. I find it very practical. You're not gonna like get it dangling in things. Um, and then very flattering on the bottom as well. I will show you some of the footwear. Um, let's start with the big box because I think they will be the most suitable to style with this dress. So I feel like every, Every autumn winter, I'm on the lookout for my perfect pair of boots and I've got some really, really gorgeous ones in my wardrobe um, and I bought a pair of Chloe boots from Netta Porter probably three years ago, the first winter that we lived in this house and I've kind of been trying to replicate the success of those ever since and I'm, I think I might have found the perfect pair. Not that there's anything wrong with the pair that I currently have, um, but they are three years old and by far my most worn, oops, by far my most worn autumn winter boots. So they are very worn. Um, I like how they look worn, but I thought equally the fact that they are my most worn, it's a good indicator that if I was to find something similar, um, then I would get a lot of wear out of them as well. First of all, these look quite big. I might have to swap for a size down, but this is the Chloe Boot Autumn Winter 2023. So we've got a nice size heel. Like this doesn't look like a heeled pair of boots. And yet for little short bottoms like me, I am five foot, I think I'm five foot four. That is a really good little heel height boost. Really easy to slip on at just the most perfect pure leather these will also look great when they are very battered up practical footwear when you live in the Cotswolds is an essential okay first of all <laughs> i think that the dress requires a slightly more elegant boot and these boots are a little bit more of a chunky style but still i will show you how they look they do feel like a good fit actually but i'd still be tempted to try the 36 on for size seeing as i normally only go 37 in trainers but there we go the most perfect chunky autumn boots oh my gosh they do look absolutely gorgeous um but yeah i think they would look better with a pair of jeans or trousers or something a little bit more relaxed whereas i think this dress can have something a little bit more elegant if you are stomping around london or another city between meetings then these are going to be a really nice comfortable and yet 
stylish boot but yeah not loving this combo so let's move on to the next look um, and then we can find something that suits the boots a little bit more I think what I'll do is show you the rest of the pieces and insert a few try-on clips. So similarly to the boots, how I was thinking about what I got so much wear out of last year and what would be real um, go-to pieces in my wardrobe this year for autumn winter, one of my most worn knits from last year is a an Isabel Moran Etoile, in fact I'll show you. <laughs> Just a pre-warning, you are gonna think I'm a little bit crazy here. This is the jumper from last year that I wore so much. It is my Isabel Moran Etoile chunky, like mega chunky knit. There's just something about the way that it fits. It hangs the perfect soft, um, chunky neck um, and just the perfect kind of cable knit. The only thing that I always wished about this knit was that it would be a little bit longer, especially when I'm wearing leggings. I just like my knits to be a bit longer. So when I saw, you can probably predict, when I saw this, I know it's so similar, it is literally the same jumper, but in long, I thought my fashion prayers had been answered. So yes, this is the exact same knit as I had last year, but in long form. So worn over leggings, um, over jeans. I think this is just gonna be the coziest piece that I love wearing for pub lunches, dog walks, both smart and casual outfits. If I was to stake a bet on my most worn knit for the autumn winter 2023 season, I think it's going to be this one. So up next we have an option. Option A being what I'm wearing right now and I think this might just pivot to the post. Option B being another knitted dress, this time from Chloe. I do adore Chloe. I footwear, outerwear, handbags, adore the brand so much and everything that I've ever purchased from Chloe I have got so much wear out of. This was, because it's Chloe and because it's a luxurious fabric, it was a very high price point so I have to be 100% sure that I'm going to get a lot of use out of something like this. Feels like cashmere. Looks like it's 50% cashmere, 50% wool with a lining of silk. So this is gonna be the most gorgeously warm dress. Um, yeah, let's see how this looks on. And just to complete my autumn basics haul, this is just the most plain, simple, easy to wear high neck. You could wear it unrolled, you could just let it like flop down or wear it as a roll neck knit from a brand called Alex Mill. Again, beautiful quality, really nice thick fabric, a fantastic layering piece if I want to put my um, thermals on underneath. I just love practical things like this in my wardrobe. I find that I just get the most wear out of, maybe not the most exciting pieces, but they are by far the most worn in my wardrobe. So here we go, another gorgeous knit um, and hopefully a great staple for my autumn winter wardrobe. So those are my gorgeous new pieces, which I cannot wait to wear. I think I am smitten, completely smitten with this dress here. It's just so comfortable, so easy to wear. So I think this one is definitely a keeper. I'm gonna snip out the labels. I've added in my little Monica Veneder earrings. I like the fact that the sleeves are short so I can really um, pop on a really nice, so I can do a really lovely wrist cluster. I'm going to pop on a slightly more elegant pair of boots and that is my outfit of the day sorted. So without further ado, let's head into London. Whoa, I cannot believe what a gorgeous day it is today. It just makes so much difference to my mood, how beautiful everything is. Have I forgotten my mobile phone? No, it's in there. I just decided, actually I say just, I thought about this at four o'clock this morning, that I have really kind of, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I've lost the passion recently for Instagram. Um, and I think since the wedding, I was just like, this content doesn't excite me anymore. And um, equally, I've been sat at 280,000 followers for goodness knows how long. So I thought, what can I do that I will enjoy, that will give me a little bit of like an excitement boost for Instagram, that will also be really useful for you guys, and maybe we might just get the ripple effect of potentially getting some new followers, maybe? That's like my lowest priority, but it would be a nice little added extra. So I had half an hour extra just now. Um, I'm never early, <laughs> but that's the perks of getting an 11.08 train. So I've decided 
that I'm gonna do 30 days of autumn outfits. Now this is absolutely not an original idea of mine. Um, I've seen quite a few girls doing it from Molly Campsey did it back in spring. I think Laura Burns is doing it for autumn. Um, those two girls, I would say, have really inspired me to do it. And at the Elizabeth Arden overnight stay, Laura let me in on a little secret on how she does it. She still films on her iPhone using the back three lens camera, um, but she airplays what's on her phone screen to her laptop so that she can see what she's filming. So I literally just set up a little tripod in my boudoir and filmed, I took this outfit off and then I filmed putting it back on again. So who knows, um, I'm gonna have a little play editing on the train, so sorry about the beeps. It's annoying me, so it must be very annoying for you. I wonder if I can turn off my sensor. Um, <laughs> so yes, I just filmed that, it took me five minutes. I'm gonna do a little edit to a trending soundtrack while I'm on the train and try to publish my outfit of the day every day um, at midday. So the aim is I'm going to publish my outfit of the day every day for the next 30 days on Instagram and I'll probably share onto YouTube Shorts as well um, and post, yeah, but I'm gonna aim to post my outfit every single day at midday on Instagram as a little reel and we'll just see how it goes. Hopefully you guys might find it useful for some ideas on how to put together outfits, ideas of styling the pieces that I'm sharing with you because I appreciate it this time of year, especially the last couple of weeks, there's been a lot of newness in my wardrobe Lots of really gorgeous, exciting things, some things which are a little bit more expensive, so you obviously want to make sure you're getting a humongous price per wear, um, and maybe styling some pieces that I've purchased in previous years, showing you new ways to style them, um, but also I think a lot of the girls that do this, they live in London, they have got quite, quite a smart wardrobe, whereas the majority of the outfits that I'll be sharing, aside from today and possibly tomorrow, because I've got a lovely, um, we've got an organic lunch, a celebration of autumn organic produce with Dalesford tomorrow. But other than like the odd occasion where I do put on something a bit smarter, I think most of the outfits are gonna be quite casual. So hopefully very um, relatable. Anyway, my camera is sliding around like a little ice skater. So, so I'll see you in London, darlings. <laughs> okay, finally made it to London. Slight delay on the train and my first meeting is in this beautiful building, which is the London Edition Hotel. So heading into Berners Tavern. Always used to come here for breakfast meetings. Haven't been for lunch in a while, but it's such a gorgeous spot. The weather in London is officially crazy today. Just got caught in a mega rainstorm and now it's beautiful blue skies again. Before I go into Harrods for my facial, I'm gonna treat myself to my favorite little pistachio frappe from Elan. Oh, it is so scrummy. Look at this insane selection. Oh my goodness, such a treat. Here it is, my absolute favorite. Oh my goodness, instead of having a dessert, I've got the pistachio frappe, and you're not allowed drinks like this in Harrods, so I'm gonna walk around the entire shop on the outside, seeing as it's not raining at the moment, and then head in for my hydrofacial. Okay, made it into Harrods, had to take my belt off. I'm feeling so full after that lovely frappe and um, my mac and cheese at <laughs> lunchtime. So you might be able to spot something rather delicious behind me on the rail. I just walked past the Gucci stall here in Harrods and I saw this hanging in the background, the very back of the store. Unfortunately, it's not my size, but I can't resist giving it a quick try. Oh 
my goodness, what a piece. This is about six sizes too big for me. This is actually their largest size and I would probably choose the smallest. Um, but the only one they've got in my size is actually in Paris. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to have to keep a little lookout online um, or book a trip to Paris. <laughs> but no, this is absolutely stunning. I often find that I'm quite tempted by Gucci outerwear. Obviously huge investments, but my goodness, so stunning. It is this just kind of off-white creamy wool cape you can cinch it in around the middle with this belt gosh the material is so heavenly it is so elegant perfect for dressing up um an otherwise quite casual outfit it's absolutely divine the buttons are just this very delicate little gucci logo oh my gosh the quality is astronomical i actually at the very last minute um decided to put my my dupe watch on instead of my Cartier because I just keep hearing about so many crimes happening in London that are watch based at the moment and actually when I was in Zara before going into Elan the security guy actually came up to me and said that he could see my phone in my bag and that he recommended that I put it in a zippy pocket because pickpocketing around here has got so bad lately so very grateful for him for letting me know um, but yeah just something to be aware of if you're coming into London but anyway on a brighter note in love with the cape um, better head to the fifth floor and I can dream about the cape while I'm getting all of the gunk pulled out of my my skin in the hydrofacial. So we're up on the fifth floor in Harrods and hydrofacial have got a pop-up for the month of September. Let's check it out. So here it is, the hydrofacial machine that I'm very familiar with and they've got this fabulous little spot on the fifth floor. So this is my base for the next hour. darlings it's now friday morning uh, i'm in the passenger side because charlie and i have driven to bamford together he's going to do a workout and i surprise surprise i'm going to do reformer pilates so uh my skin feels amazing this morning when i was um prepping for the hydrofacial the lady asked me what i was hoping to achieve from the treatment and I mentioned about these little like underskin um, marks that I've had ever since I had those blemishes after my excessive sun cream use in Kefalonia, which ironically it would have been sunnier here <laughs> anyway, we move on. Um, and they're so much better this morning and my skin feels glowing, it feels clean, so love, love a hydrofacial, I recommend them so highly. Um, it is gorgeous today. I fear it might end up like yesterday where we have a little bit of rain later on in the day but at the moment it's crisp blue sky. Today I almost felt like it was going to be frosty. It was seriously chilly. Had to wait for the car to heat up a little bit um, but yeah it's a gorgeous morning. I'm actually quite early. Class starts. Actually it's only nine minutes so I think I'm going to go and get a matcha latte to take into class with me because it's so chilly. I need something to warm through my body. Um, hour long reformer Pilates and then I'm going to go home and do some work and do some filming and then come back to Dalesford at lunchtime because we have got a growers produce organic lunch celebration um, which is going to be really lovely. September is organic month. I published a blog post last week about why um, I love eating organically and why I think that it's important that we all consider swapping a few things for organic not just for um, our own health but also supporting farmers and local producers. I also shared something on my Instagram this morning from the founder of Riverford and he was saying that if things stay exactly how they are at the moment with supermarkets literally forcing farmers to cut the price of their produce, the price that they accept for their produce, then we could lose 50% almost half of the UK farmers in the next year alone. Now that is quite petrifying. An example he gave was that when he was selling his lettuces to Sainsbury's, 
Sainsbury's signed a contract saying we will buy 50,000 uh, lettuces from you at 15 pence a lettuce and then halfway through the season it got cold and people weren't buying so many salads anymore so Sainsbury's were like actually yeah um rip up that contract we're gonna pay you six pence per lettuce and so then the farmer is making a loss on a crop that he has spent so much time effort and money growing throughout the season and that's just one tiny example the founder I can't remember his name but he was saying that happens over and over and over again children see their parents working like I see farmers working at three o'clock in the morning the headlights are on over the fields they they are so like constantly working so hard um, and also they maintain the hedgerows they maintain this I can get emotional talking about it they maintain this beautiful countryside making it look as beautiful as it is which we just take so for granted we presume it's the government or the council doing it it's actually the farmers like when a tree falls down in the road you don't call your local council you call a local farmer and they come and sort it for you there's so much that they do beyond actually growing food and to think that children grow up seeing their parents who are farmers working all these hours doing this incredibly tough manual labor job and getting and then when you hear that supermarkets are just completely um shafting them and they're not that their farmers can earn like negative equity in a year like they make a loss sometimes or quite often which is heartbreaking um so and then it's tricky because i understand that we are so fortunate to live in the countryside we have access to farm shops where i can buy from farmers directly literally sat in the dalesford car park right now able to buy here where they support local farmers and pay a fair wage but um riverford if you do live somewhere that's not in the countryside and you want to support farmers then riverford do veg boxes and they pay their farmers a fair price and work with lots of farmers um around the country to do so as well so there are ways even if you live in the city but yeah sorry that was quite a random um ramble that i wasn't intending on having but it just I, I'll leave the reel from Riverford that I shared on my stories um, linked down below so you can have a little watch because it's really interesting and I think that if you um, if you want the benefits of eating organically obviously so much better for our bodies but also if you care for the countryside and care that um, British growers are literally getting priced out the market by these big supermarkets then it's worth considering um, shopping small, shopping from your local farmers, shopping from smaller producers and um, shopping organically where possible. So yes gosh that's my random my Friday morning spiel. Right okay I bet it's now literally time for me to go and do my Pilates because we've been chatting for <laughs> five minutes. Okay and the yummel. Got my barefoot trainers on. <laughs> actually starting to find them so comfortable what a beautiful morning oh I can see my breath oh you're, you're right that's lovely thank you you're very waggy today do you want to come and help mummy get some veggies for her omelette? What a gorgeous morning. Beautiful. Right. Let's see what we can harvest to put in my omelette this morning. I've only got about an hour and a half at home and then I need to go back to Dalesford for our lunch event. But needs must. Oh, I can see some very perfect little tomatoes. Oh, little babies. Look at this. Perfect. Look at this, my little habanero chili peppers are starting to ripen. Gosh, cannot wait to eat those. In fact, I wonder if you, this little one might be quite nice in my morning omelette. And that's my little collection. Come on then, bunny. Got quite a few compliments on my gym wear this morning in Pilates. My Vuori set that I got from New York. Ooh, any more? Yes, we're getting a few more eight ball courgettes. Not quite big enough just yet. Ooh, I haven't checked these in a few days. Yikes. Oh, dearie me. Oh, dearie me. You've got rather large. Right, need to harvest you. 
and lots more little tomatoes in this self-seeded bush. Done really well for tomatoes in the latter half of this summer. lovely colourful harvest for this morning. Ooh, we need to do some dahlia picking as well. I think I'll have to save that until this afternoon from a time point of view. And some rose dead heading. Do you know what? Bunny rabbit might pop a little onion in my omelette this morning as well. Perfect. I do love a spring onion. And I haven't got any bread, so I'm going to take some leaves to have with it. It's a lovely chicory salad that we've got here. Okay, my darlings, made it back to Dalesford. I literally feel like a jack-in-a-box today. Back and forth, back and forth. And basically I had to go home and not stay here because I needed to film my daily outfit for Instagram because I am sticking to that. Um, so I'm gonna go live with that in a few moments time. Charlie's just gonna pop some shopping from the farm shop in the boot of the car, I'm just keeping a lookout for him. Um, and then we are heading in for our September organic produce lunch. So kind of conveniently going along with what I was talking about this morning, um, supporting British growers and organic produce, Dalesford are the masters of that. So today they're hosting, or well, they've got like a lunch event which is all about organic, organic food and seasonal produce. And it's gonna be held in the market garden. So hopefully we'll get a little look around the garden too. So that's on the agenda. I'm going to find Charlie and then we'll head on through. Gosh, this is what my lettuce area should be looking like. I need to spend a bit of time tidying mine up. Charlie's in herb heaven. And I'd say our herb bed looks better to be fair. Ooh! But um, the beds look more tidy aren't they, don't they? They sure do. And then we've got our lunch in this lovely teepee. This is the market garden where they grow lots of lovely bits. I'm sure we'll get a little tour very shortly. So we've had our lovely September organic produce month, local, seasonal, <laughs> all of those words, lunch in that teepee over there. And now we're having a little stroll through the Dalesford Market Garden. It is, I think, 30 acres, possibly more. I might have made that up. Um, but yeah, just having a little stroll through as we digest our food. So you can see down here is where they are growing their gourds, their squash ready for the harvest season. You can pick these up in the farm shop. All of the apple trees are laden with fruit. It's a really beautiful area. We actually had the head of the market garden, Jez, come and give us a little talk about what's in season at the moment. And then the chef um, explaining how fantastic it is that he can just stroll through here, see what is plentiful to cook some delicious dishes with. I think this uh, lighter coloured crop over here is leek. Could be onion, but I'm pretty sure it's leek. If you've never seen leek growing in the ground before, this is what it looks like. So they'll be picking, picking this soon. It's almost ready. And then we'll be finding it on the shelves of the farm shop. Yeah, is this leek? Yeah. Yeah. 
whole forest of leek and then over here they, they, they really are in serious need of a plumber of a plumber yep <laughs> you can see over here rows upon rows of purple kale classic green kale this would be quite a fun place to come for a school trip because there was definitely a time where I had no idea what kale looked like when it was growing from the ground. Actually, I tell a lie, this is sprouts. They are very small. Um, but yeah, so if you look really closely here, these are little, where's my hand? There, these are little tiny sprouts. So they will be ready just in time for Christmas. And then over here, this is, oh, I'm not sure actually. What's this, darling? Is this a type of sprout? Purple cabbage, isn't it? Purple cabbage, is it? I don't know. I, I think it's purple sprouts. Oh yeah, it is sprouts. It is sprouts, yeah. Yeah, absolutely sprouts. amazing. And then amazing. over there. It's natural colour, isn't it? Yep, yeah, rainbow chard. Oop, rainbow chard growing over there. Beautiful produce as far as the eye can see. Hello my darlings, back home again. Quick one, does this make a difference? Lighting wise, I have basically unboxed something very jazzy. It's on a very bright mode. That's a little bit more natural. There's a few different modes. Cold, very cold, warm, natural, but still a bit cold. I think I like that one the best. Uh, let me show you what I'm looking at. This is a very jazzy new mirror light which arrived from Beautifect. Can you see the writing? Yeah, Beautifect down there. Um, you can alter the brightness, very hard to show you. And as I just showed you, you can alter the temperature of the light. Um, yeah, I previously had a very rickety old mirror and a ring light up here because it is quite a dark space unfortunately for sitting and filming um but yeah that's a lovely new addition to this area it's currently charging you can normally use it wirelessly but um the battery ran out so i've currently got it charging it charges with the same wire as my laptop which is super so slight digression there back home and fueled up on a lovely coffee after a wonderful lunch at Dalesford, out in the market garden, really funny, we were sat next to a couple um, and we actually, they bought up Riverford and I said, oh my goodness, we were just talking about um, the post that they shared about supporting British farmers and they have actually, this couple, I think they were probably in their 70s, so lovely. Uh, John and Andrea and they said that they have been ordering from Riverford in the various iterations of the company for the last 15 years they've really seen it change and grow so much so it was really fascinating to talk to them and we shared a lot of um, common interests with regards to uh, eating organically and supporting local and our thoughts on the British farming community so yeah really really lovely lunch I have got a large H&M delivery over there, but I think I might save that until the next vlog. But I realized I forgot to show you yesterday a couple of pairs of trainers, um, one of which I ordered from Netta Porter. The other pair is actually another pair of Vivo Barefoot because I have been very much enjoying wearing my barefoot trainers. I'll show you those in a second. Um, and then also this pair was in my Netta Porter order. Don't know why I forgot to show you these yesterday, but I did. I got so excited by the Chloe boots. Uh, and if you just saw me vacuuming something up, by the way, it was a very large, dead, thankfully, spider. It is seriously spider season here in the UK at the moment, which is <sighs> horrible. And they're very large out here. Oh my goodness me. Uh, so if you see me screaming in the background of a vlog, <laughs> that's why. Okay, so let's start with the pair of trainers that I got on Netapodia. It is a pair from APL. Ooh. Oh. 
Oh no. Okay, so I mean these are really cute. <laughs> Let's just say that from the word go. The reason why I just went, oh no, is because I really thought that they were going to answer my lazy girl prayers and be a uh, pull-on. As in like not have laces. I thought from the picture on the website that these laces were just for fun. Um, and that I would be able to just pull them on and not have to bother with laces. I wonder if I really do have to bother with laces. Yes, I have got home and instantly put on just like the coziest outfit of all time. But then, ooh, if the laces end up inside the shoes, what is the point in them? That is the question that I have to ask myself. Ooh, I think these are actually too small for me. My goodness, I don't know if I can get my foot in there. Wow, that's a really small, like foot entering zone. I don't think I can get my feet in. Maybe you do actually have to undo the laces, which I really can't be bothered to do. I know my Vivo barefoots are not a slip on. <clears throat> okay, I actually can't. I can't get my foot in those. That's really annoying. I think I have got quite thick socks on. I have to say, these are quite possibly the most beautiful trainers I have ever seen. Can you see they're like, really bad cold lighting out, outside which is making everything look cold but they're like a a chunky knit and then pink on the top like a knitted finish here they almost look crochet I mean they truly are beautiful athletic propulsion labs and I placed an order directly on the APL website as well but then found that they just had a really really nice selection on their supporter I'm going to try them on with some thinner trainers later, uh, maybe tomorrow morning when I'm about to go to Pilates because they are absolutely stunning. If any of you guys have seen on your travels a really beautiful pair of slip-on trainers, please let me know because I feel like this is what I'm really in the market for at the moment. And then Vivo Barefoot, I mentioned to you, ooh, these are nice. Wow, they look really big, really, really big. Uh, what size did I get? 37. Did I not realize that I'm actually a size 36 in Vivo Barefoot. Um, yeah, so I introduced Re Vivo Barefoot to you last week, or the week before, saying that I'm really interested in trying more barefoot footwear because it's so much better for your feet, for your bones and your muscles, um, and just for long-term foot, knee, leg health, it's really important to look at more um, or less heavily structured shoes. The kind of shoes that are on trend at the moment have got the huge chunky sole. And if you imagine, you know how when you break your arm and your arm is in a cast, when you take the cast off, you have kind of lost a little bit of the movement in your arm and it's weakened well that is what is happening to our feet every single day and also the way that so many of our shoes let me get an example this is not even like a, a bad pair but so many pairs of shoes go down into a point and that is not the shape that our feet are and it actually causes is it bunions where like the knobbly bit by your big toe gets really inflamed and like sticks out that is because our feet are getting reshaped into this point even regular trainers and boots they all go into like a rounded toe and that's just not the shape that our feet are which leads to so many foot and leg problems. Barefoot shoes do have a wider toe post, um, which can look a little bit funny on first view, but, and they do feel a little bit different to wear. Like if you wear them over gravel and things like that, you really feel the ground underneath you, but I actually really like that. I feel like it connects me to the, um, to the ground underneath. This is the Primus Knit Pair. I like how they look. They are super lightweight, really like flexible, bendy sole. Why did I get a 37? I would say get your actual size, don't size up. I normally get a size 37 in trainers, but 36 in the rest of things. <laughs> Ooh, I like how these look. Actually, they are very comfortable. I've got a feeling that they <laughs> didn't have a size 36 in this style on the website. Um, so I'll keep a look out before I wear these outside if they do get them in a smaller size. Otherwise, I will keep these because they do fit. They're just, they, they're quite roomy. And another thing that takes a little bit of getting used to is most trainers, like 
these ones, you can see that the heel is elevated and then it slopes down to where your toes are. Whereas in the Vivo Barefoot ones, because there's no support anywhere, you don't have that heel elevation. So it's almost like your leg muscles have to figure out how to walk again, which is why some people do take a little bit of time to get used to wearing barefoot shoes. Um, but I've been really enjoying it so far and I feel like there's such a community of people that have seen the light when it comes to barefoot footwear and realize the importance of um, not constraining our feet for long-term foot and leg and knee health. I've got my mum wearing them, Charlie's mum is wearing them, and um, yeah, I think it's I think it's really interesting. So this is my new pair of Vivo Barefoots. I think this is the nicest style of the three pairs that I've got now. I think these will be my um, like more fashion version, and then the ones. Uh, where are they? This is my original pair, looking a little bit mucky. I literally trudged through the streets of New York wearing these and I wear them to get myself to and from Pilates and around the house and in the garden and things like that. I've really been enjoying wearing this pair, but in my opinion, they look a little bit more kind of medical. Um, so these will be my sport pair and my long walk pair. And then the new pair I think will be my like fashion pair. So yes, do I even need the APLs? I mean, they're so beautiful. They really are beautiful. Might have to order them in the size up. Anyway, enough shoe chat. We were going to go for a walk because it was a glorious afternoon, um, but tragically it has started to get very cloudy, so I'm not sure um, what we're doing for the rest of the afternoon. But my darlings, I think this vlog has got, I uh, don't know if it's that long, but I don't think anything else exciting is going to happen today. So I think I will actually wrap it up here. So I really, really hugely appreciate you watching to the very end. If you got to the end, then um, please leave the word shoe <laughs> shoe in your comment and also it would really mean the world to me if you head over to my instagram and um let me know if you are enjoying the daily outfit reels i feel like you get to see over there what i'm wearing before you see it here on youtube because i'm filming them in real time which is already proving a bit challenging i aim to get them up midday every day but even today it was like half past 12 but alas um i will try harder <laughs> so darlings thank you so much for watching i hope you've had a wonderful start to your week and i'll see you very soon in the next one goodbye